Every month, GameRanks puts together the weirdest gaming stories from the last 30 days. And it seems like they just keep getting stranger. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, 10 weird gaming stories from March 2021. Starting off at number 10, a man was arrested for sending not one death threat because he couldn't win at a game, not two death threats, not five, not 10, not 15, not 20, not even 30 death threats because he couldn't win at a game, but 37 death threats to Square Enix because he could not win at a game. Back in November, they started getting death threats via the company's online game and query form. These messages read in such language as, I will seriously kill you, you cheating developers. They actually called off a live broadcast due to this. And what happened was this guy got arrested and the information was put out to the public about this arrest over the last month. And when he got arrested, he told police, I couldn't win and I was feeling frustrated and got emotional. Now, I, I don't know about you, but when I get emotional, I don't threaten people's lives. Uh, when I get frustrated at video games, the worst I will do is curse. Sometimes I will curse at another player, sure, uh, but I will not go through the trouble of writing down threatening messages using contact forms and actually sending them to the developers of the game. That's insane. But I guess they got him, though. Like, do you really think people aren't going to find you when you send something through the Internet? Especially if you're just frustrated and emotional. I bet you're probably not turning on the VPN or anything. <laughs> At number nine, a game preservation group called the Hidden Palace released over 700 PS2 early builds, E3 demos, press release demos and prototypes for people to just play in a huge data dump that has been dubbed Project Deluge. Now, this is really neat on account, to be completely clear, this stuff isn't stuff that anyone was really meant to see. I mean, other than people who were attending E3 and writing coverage. So these types of builds can be geared towards specifically different goals altogether than a finished product. Like you might limit some aspect of the game in order to present a nicer looking version of it. I don't know. There's tons of stuff that could change, but there's like Crazy Taxi, Final Fantasy X-2, Lego Star Wars, the video game, Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. There are a ton of games in this dump and it's all internal stuff that a normal regular gamer wasn't meant to touch and i am going to at number eight somebody posted screenshots of a one-year fallout 4 settlement build uh, meaning a thing that they had been working on for a literal entire year and oof, it shows it is not something that i would have come up with in fallout 4's frankly, pretty limited settlement builder. I mean, it's pretty much a resort. It's got views, it's got places to eat, places to play, places to store your power armor. Oh, and it's also physically impossible. Like, look at look at this. That That's not something that is structurally sound, but it's cool. Is it something I would spend a year building? No, it's not. But it is something that the user HaterAid Quencher did. And I have to say congratulations, because it is genuinely cool. Maybe a weird way to invest your time, but that doesn't make it not cool. At number seven, a Grand Theft Auto online player by the name of Toast basically fixed the loading times on Grand Theft Auto online. Fantastic work by this gentleman, by the way. This has been something that has frustrated people for so long because it has just been insane the amount of time it can take to load Grand Theft Auto online. In a post that was not designed to boast, Toast was able to detail how he could reduce the GTA Online load time by the most. Rockstar Games, not wanting to come off gross, awarded him 10 grand. And good on them too, because through their bug bounty program, they would normally award that kind of money for security or privacy issues that a player might uncover. But this was such a significant change that they were like, oh, okay, yes. And they incorporated this fixed into an official build of the game. So now the load times in Grand Theft Auto Online are way better. Seriously, silly rhyming aside, Toast deserves a serious amount of praise from everybody who plays that game. Thank you, sir. I understand that the 10 grand is a sweet reward, but I also hope this guy understands how much people like myself and all the other people who are playing this game 
appreciate this. At number six is a player decided that they wanted to calculate the amount of time necessary to build their own dream team. So Scuds TV figured, hey, you get a certain amount of coins per game, right? He went with an average of 1500 coins per game because that was what he had experienced. Now, his dream team would cost 100 million coins and in order to get 100 million coins, at 1,500 coins per game, that's about 66,666 games. Yes, a satanic number of games. Now he figures about 20 minutes a game, and I think that that's fair. Sometimes games take longer, sometimes they're a little shorter, but that's about 22,000 hours of play, or 916 days of gameplay if you never did anything else, like, you know, sleep, eat, go to the bathroom, etc. Also known as completely impossible, a person can't do that. Also, it's a yearly franchise, so that's like three games from now. Even if you could do that, it'd be useless. But they also calculated out the amount of money that you would have to spend, and it equals out to about $110,000, or about 80,000 pounds. Now, I went ahead and did a little bit of calculation beyond that, making the assumption that that 22,000 hours worth of work, and let's not call it play because it's work at this point, is worth $110,194. You would be getting paid $5 an hour to do that. Like, that's not even minimum wage, man. I mean, seriously, this is pure exploitation when you think about it in concrete terms. Because when you spend that time doing this game, you cannot spend that time doing labor for real money somewhere else. This system, man. Come on. And number five, getting divorced in the new story of Seasons video game means you got to kill your kids in the game. Like, not your real ones. If you do that with your real ones, that's a serious problem. This is a little virtual world, okay? But the way that it works is if you marry in this game, you can have kids. Uh, You name them. The game gives you little updates on milestones like baby's first steps, birthdays, etc. But if you divorce your spouse, they just poof, gone. They're done. They don't exist. Did they ever exist? I don't even know. Like, it's possibly worse than killing them. It's possibly erasing them from the fabric of time and space. And here's the thing, you can remarry that same spouse again, but that does nothing in terms of those children. They're gone. Does your spouse remember what happened? Does your spouse remember that you chose to erase your children from existence? I don't even know. You do though, as a player. What is that, Olive Town developers? Why? At number four, the global shortage in computer chips has reached a quote unquote crisis point. Now this is weird because it's honestly something I never thought I would hear. As computer chips have become more and more miniaturized and less expensive to create, the resources to make them not particularly scarce or anything. But last year when the pandemic first started, there was an obvious lack of labor because factory workers weren't allowed into the factories. Protocols and vaccines and all that stuff later, production is now at the capacity it was pre-pandemic. That being said, consumer habits production methods and necessities, and the overall organization of business have totally changed over the last year. Now, the small one is obviously consumer demand. It's different, but not super different. People all had iPhones, people all had computers, people all had consoles, and that stuff was bought at high rates before the pandemic. It's a little bit higher now, not a lot. There's also a big change as automakers are moving over to electric vehicles and other various aspects of life are being turned into electronics at a much higher rate. And then the big one is business organization, which has become almost entirely virtual, necessitating so much technology to be produced, maintained, data centers set up, et cetera, et cetera. Basically in all sectors of the economy, chips are more necessary than they've ever been. And even at pre-pandemic production levels, it's just, it's not, they're not keeping up which is great for people who make lots of money exploiting the third world for mining of resources and exploiting labor in factories far away, but not so great for, you know, everyone who's not those people. Especially if you want to watch Netflix driving down the highway in your brand new Tesla car, which I hope you don't. If you are in that position, please don't do that. At number three, a grandmother was shocked by a $1,400 charge on her credit card for a video game 
that's not going to get refunded. Now, this lady was definitely not expecting that when her 13 year old grandson asked if she could use her credit card to buy points on one of the games he plays. And she thought that he could only spend $15. Over the course of about three days, he ran up $1,400. Three days. That's it. According to the grandmother, it probably would have kept going too if the credit card company didn't deem it suspicious. Now the grandson said that he didn't realize what he'd done and I wouldn't be shocked. Lesson learned, I guess. I don't really know what else to say about this. It just sucks all around for everybody involved. I mean, except for the kid who's got like $1,400 worth of microtransactional advantages in whatever game he's playing. But oh sure, I'm sure he's real shook up, yeah. At number two, FIFA, the International Federation of Associated Football. Original language is in French, that's why it's FIFA and not IFAF. <laughs> international yeah you get it they made more money off of video games than they did off of actual football slash soccer depending on where you live for me it's soccer honestly i mean this is also pandemic related obviously because they weren't able to have the big tournaments so basically everything continued virtually almost all fifa oriented activity was virtual they even had virtual tournaments, but really the majority of that money came from licensing the FIFA name to Electronic Arts for video games because they take in royalties from that. Like they take a percentage of the profit and holy crap, did that stuff ever profit this last year? And finally at number one, police busted the quote unquote world's biggest video game cheat operation. Okay, so this collaborative effort between Tencent, one of the biggest video game companies in the world, and the Chinese police who take video game cheating way more seriously than we do here in the United States, busted the biggest operation, which was selling access to these cheats for everything from Overwatch to Call of Duty Mobile. And apparently these people had sold $76 million worth of cheats. They had subscription tiers to their cheat system from $10 to $200. And this had netted them so much money that they had like $46 million of assets basically lying around that police seized, including uh, uh, some luxury sports cars. Like to me, I don't know what's weirder, the size of the cheating operation, like a $76 million video game cheating empire. Like I started playing video games in the late 1980s and you cheated by like pressing buttons in a sequence. That's bizarre to me enough as it is. But then the idea that the biggest corporation works with probably one of the biggest world governments to arrest people for cheating in games. It's just, it's video games have become serious business is all I'm saying here. This is wild. But what do you think? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.